Hi, I'm Gart. This is our third Japanese traditional folktale show. These stories are from the Dekomowashi Traditional Puppet Theater of Higashi Futakuchi in Hakusan, Ishikawa. Today we will introduce Genji Eiboshiori, or the lacquered hat of the Genji. Before we begin, let's take a look at some special aspects of the puppet theater that make it all the more enjoyable. Hello everyone, I'm Susan. And I'm Daniel, welcome back. So as the curtain rises, the puppets appear on stage, matching the rhythm of the flute and the taiko drum. This is a small performance called Sambaso, which signals the beginning of the performance to the guests. So the puppets are praying for world peace, a bountiful harvest, and the happiness of the guests. Next, the Kojo puppet appears on stage. So this puppet gives a prologue of the main story. These are traditional courtesies which occur before the main performance starts. These scenes can also be seen in similar traditional Japanese performing arts such as no and kabuki as well. So they take great care to uh, preserve the traditional formalities. Once the performance finishes, this puppet appears on stage to express gratitude to the guests. That's right, this puppet entertains the guests using wordplay using uh, the names of mountains, rivers and oceans throughout Japan. Yes, so that's what they call Hanahome. <laughs> that's right, this is a masterful performance carried out by the Dekonomai Preservation Council Chairman, Mr. Jinichi Michishita. You can really feel his desire to entertain the guests. Indeed, the puppeteers and puppets are thankful to the audience for giving them the opportunity to perform. This is surely one reason that this tradition has been able to continue so long. え、私の、あ、小さい時から、あ、デクに携わってきました。え、じいちゃんが大好きで、え、まあ、風呂にいても、お仕事してても、料理を語った、いたもんで、え、デクが私の人生だと思っております。え、そして今現在私もだいぶ
has secretly undergone the ceremony to recognize his attainment of manhood and has taken the name Uhyo Enosuke Yoritomo. I gather he is making preparations and gathering forces to attack the Heike. I also hear that his younger brother Ushiwaka has completed his training in the mountains of Kurama and is lying in wait near Kyoto planning his offensive. If this is true, both Yoritomo and Ushiwaka must have been covertly granted military rank by the Emperor and, naturally, they will need eboshi, appropriate to their rank. If anyone whom you do not recognize comes to purchase an eboshi, inform me immediately. You will be well rewarded. Having turned 16 years old, Ushiwaka did indeed come to Goro Dayu's shop to purchase adult headgear soon thereafter. I would like to buy an eboshi, he said. Ushiwaka was so handsome and was dressed so elegantly that the hat maker's beautiful 15-year-old daughter, Shinonome, fell in love with him on sight. Attempting to calm her pounding heart, she hid her blushing cheeks with her sleeve. Her demeanor made her appear even more lovely to Ushiwaka. I am looking for an eboshi with the thin part at the top bent over. Ushiwaka took Shinonomi's hand. Just then, Gorodayu returned to his shop and realized at a glance that the youth was likely to be Ushiwaka. Affecting a smile, he asked, So, my young gentleman, you are looking for an eboshi? Well, well, do you have any preference? Yes, I am searching for one with a rough texture and the peak bent to the left, Ushiwaka replied. I see. I don't have one like that already made, but I can have one crafted for you overnight, so please, won't you stay here this evening? Ushiwaka turned to leave the shop. Thank you, but uh, no, I'll come back tomorrow morning. Grasping his sleeve to hold him back, Shinonome said, It is my father's wish, but I also would like to celebrate your coming of age, so please do remain with us here tonight. Succumbing to her wish, Ushiwaka decided to wait there for his eboshi to be completed. Gorodayu addressed his daughter, Shinonome, this young man being our first customer of the year, be sure to show him our finest hospitality. As he hurried out the door to see Osada Tadamune, Gorodayu thought to himself, I have captured Ushiwaka! I have captured Ushiwaka! I shall receive my reward in gold coins aplenty! That day, Ushiwaka and Shinonome exchanged promises that they would become husband and wife. Late in the night, when the left-bent eboshi was completed, Shinonome said, let us celebrate here in this room. She set out a ceramic bowl of sake and cups for drinking. Seeing this, Ushiwaka said, What delightful care you've taken. The truth is, I am Ushiwaka, son of Yoshitomo. Someday, when I have destroyed the Heike and this world becomes the realm of the Genji, I shall indeed repay this kindness. If times were different, all the lords of the country of Japan would be celebrating my first eboshi. These are indeed unfortunate circumstances. Ushiwaka shed tears, as did Shinonome. Ushiwaka leaned his sword against the alcove pillar, regarding it as the enshrinement of Hachiman, the god of war. He took the eboshi and placed it on his own head. Beginning this day, I shall be known as an adult by the name Minamoto no Yoshitsune. Let the age of the Genji flourish forever. Shinonome felt pity as she watched the young man carry out this ritual all alone. In a moment of inspiration, she scurried to a back room of the shop, placed a large number of eboshi on a rack, and hung men's costumes under them. Bringing them out, she lined them up before Ushiwaka. It looked just as if a crowd had hurriedly gathered there to celebrate Ushiwaka's coming-of-age ceremony. 
Congratulations, she said. All the great warriors of the eight provinces of eastern Japan have brought their retainers to this celebration. It is a sign that the Genji shall prosper. Please let us drink to this occasion. Shinonome celebrated with a toast. Having heard from Korodayu, Osada arrived at the hat shop in order to capture Ushiwaka. There, through the cracks of the sliding partition, he saw that dozens of great men had gathered. Osada trembled and stayed rooted to the spot. Gorodayu asked, What is the matter, Lord Osada? Do act swiftly and seize Ushiwaka. Osada responded, Just take a look. He has so many troops assembled. I alone cannot simply take him by sword. Peering inside, Gorodayu was also shocked at the sight. The two men's perplexity began to turn to panic. Suddenly, Seemingly out of nowhere, appeared before them the dashing figure of Kon Omaru, who, along with Morinaga, had rescued Ushiwaka and his mother years before. Instantly, Osada fell prone to the ground, crying out, Spare us! Ushiwaka and Shinonome opened the sliding partition and emerged. Seeing Kon Omaru, Ushiwaka felt reassured. Trembling, Gorodayu also cried out, Please, please spare us! Kon Omaru stepped on Gorodayu's back. I could certainly not bring myself to pardon you, but I will forgive the girl and spare her. He pressed down more powerfully, but when he let up a bit to turn his attention to Osada, Gorodayu scuffled away on his knees. Ho! Oh, Osada! growled Kon Omaru. Killing you now would be too good a fate for you. Instead, I shall take you before Yoritomo, who once was called Imawaka, and torture you to death, then and there. So, what did you think? Yeah, really interesting. Okay. Yeah, there's something in these Dekunomai tales that resonates in the mm. people of today. Yeah, and you can mm. read these picture books online. See the URL in the description box below. So we hope to see you all here at the Puppet Theatre to see the live performance someday. See you next time! Deep in the mountains of Hakusan, there's a puppet tradition. 350 years of history, Deku no Mai, Deku no Mai.